The deep seas of the world's oceans are full of many strange and bizarre animals, many of which I've covered on the channel, and yet there is always more to talk about when it comes to them, because there's just so many. It's a very alien environment and one that often goes undiscussed, so for this video my aim is to cover one of the most unusual, and they are the Chubais. Chubais, otherwise known by the scientific name of Stellophorus chordatus, are certainly up there as some of the weirdest fish known, and just from looking at them, that's evident enough. Due to their long and spindly appearance, they were first thought to be in the fish order of Lampreiforms, which includes the Opas and the Ribbon Fishes, as well as the Oarfish, of which some of the latter can get up to 8 metres in length in the case of the giant species. This made sense given their streamlined bodies and shimmering appearance, as well as how they move throughout the water column, and this wasn't really questioned for over 80 years by ichthyologists. That was until a paper arguing against this was published in 2007, that found through genetic evidence that in fact, their closest relatives were the fish in the order Gadiforms, which include cod and hake. This was found through the examination of the mitochondrial genome of three individuals, which after these sequences were constructed into two separate datasets, the tubias lacked three of the four synapomorphies found in lampreiforms, characteristics which are present in an ancestral species and shared by their descendants. They possess the ability to extend their maxilla and premaxilla as a singular unit during feeding, which while tubais are also capable of this, lacking the others suggests that more of a look-in is needed to better understand them. Considering their unique overall morphology, it was therefore concluded that they actually belong in an entirely unique order of fish, with them so far as their only member, the Styloforiforms. This is particularly interesting, as there are around 70 fish orders in total, so being the only species in one of them is pretty amazing in showing just how different and neat they are. They are found in deep warm waters around the world, with them making nightly migrations to shallower depths to feed on plankton, which congregate there to both avoid predation and to feed on plentiful phytoplankton themselves. Drifting up there, they aren't that big of fish, only growing to about 30cm long, and are also very thin, though their long raffins do add an additional 30cm to them, which is what inspires one of their other common names of threadtails. The most distinguishing trait, of course, is in regard to their tubular eyes, which with their resemblance to binoculars, are thought to help them in being better able to pick up the faint bioluminescence that is emitted by their prey, namely small crustaceans. When they find them, they then expand their also tubular looking mouths to an astonishing 40 times their original size, which creates a suction pressure that draws in their surrounding prey of copepods and other crustaceans, with them then expelling the water that has entered their mouth through their gills, all the while keeping the prey inside for them to feed on. Even though they're one of the earliest described deep sea fish, being described in 1791, they are still quite poorly known, and so there may well be yet more to learn on these most unusual fish. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.